action. Action. Say something. No. Oh, what? Come on. <laughs> okay, so Joseph Quinn, Jamie Campo Bauer, two of the standout performances of season four of Stranger Things, and you're here in Brazil. So, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's lovely having you here. Thank okay. You. Well, you two don't have any scenes together in season four, do you? No. So you're getting to know each other right now. <laughs> well, we, Joseph and I sat next to each other at the I read. I like that you call me Joseph, by the way. Joseph. Thank you. Dear boy, yeah, Joseph. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> When I don't call him that, he goes mental. Um, <laughs> we sat next to each other at the read-through uh, in, back in March, as you said, of 20, 2011. Um, and, uh, and then we, we, we got to know each other pretty quickly. We went for dinner and, and, and would sort of talk every now and again. So we've known each other. We've, we got to know each other pretty oh, quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were both kind of British, British <laughs> and in a kind of yes. weird spot. So we kind of... <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. And smokers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. There you go. <laughs> All right. So uh, what was it like being in that environment? Not only you were there uh, for the first time with a group of actors who had been together for a while, but being Brits and being, one, the town outcast, and two, uh, mm. supreme evil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, what was it like kind of joining? Yeah. It was kind of crazy. Um, it was a very, it's, it's a very, very daunting thing, kind of coming into a show that's kind of as well established as this, and clearly they're getting something right. Um, the fans have so much uh, devotion towards all of the characters that inhabit this world, and I think kind of when you're kind of coming into it, and I, yeah, I will speak for both of us because you told <laughs> me, uh, you're kind of, you're very nervous not to kind of you know that there are lots of cogs in this machine, and you don't want to be that cog that mm. kind of brings it to its knees. Um, so it was initially quite, quite uh, daunting, but everyone, we were working with very different, we had very different kind of storylines, mm. but everyone that we worked, well, I worked with anyway, was very gracious and kind and welcoming, and from what I gather, you had a similar experience. Absolutely, I mean, for me, that you know, I, I was filled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude, you know, from the beginning, you know, even just receiving an email to be asked to audition for this project was just ridiculous, like that was just felt, absurd to me um, so you know when we got on set and you feel like I felt like that internally and then you work with you know creative geniuses like Matt and Ross Duffer and that kind of filters through everyone that that, that vibration filters through everyone that it, you, we were made to feel so comfortable so so quickly but also the level of work that is done on this show from cast and crew alike is of such a high quality that you want to and have no choice but to bring your A-game or to kind of up your game, as it were. Um, and that's, that's what we hope for. That's what I live for, really. Yeah. I think you both attained it this season. It, two very important characters and two, as I said, I, I think, you know, it's standout performances, really. In any show, they would be standout, but this... Uh, but the moment I looked at Eddie, I said, well, you know, Eddie Van Halen, you know, that hair. And in one minute, I had fallen in love with you, Joseph, with your character. Okay. And um, uh, how do you find that kind of purchase in a character? I mean, from the get-go, you have to win the audience. Uh, it's, um, yeah, this is a, it's a, a steep observation there. I think kind of, yeah, he, it, it was a weird uh, thing that Eddie had to do, really. I think kind of that first scene is so brilliantly written and well realised. And uh, it's just from the off, uh, because of the, how brilliant the writing is, you learn so much about that character. Um, we actually ended up shooting that scene like very far down uh, the line in terms of um, the, 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 the schedule of the shoot. I think we shot it in like June of 2021 or something. It was one of the last scenes that I had to film. So it's very weird kind of shooting your introduction scene very far down the line. And I actually auditioned with that scene. So I'd had those kind of words in my head for like the best part of two years. Um, so that was quite kind of like nice to get that out there. Um, but in terms of um, you falling in love with me, yeah, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that you you liked him. I love you too. Is I love you too. <laughs> Eddie is such a winning, 
person. It's uh, he's really lovely, and it breaks your heart that the town doesn't see him as he is. Really. I suppose so that's kind of the the thing that he had to do for this for this season. Like you had to kind of you had to feel for him. Um, and even though the, the the narrative of of the scripts and the story is kind of presenting him as the villain to the rest of the town. Within that, as an audience, you have to kind of feel compassion and feel sorry yes. for him. Um, so I'm glad that you felt that. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel that. And, uh, you know, um, by the same token, I felt very intrigued the moment the orderly entered the scene. I said, wow, that's a very, very unusual character. Um, what is he doing? So you have three iterations mm. uh, of a character here. Henry one and uh, Vecna. Uh, was that a bit confusing? I mean, to keep them all straight. And which one do you think was the one that uh, did it for you? Uh, you know, allowed you to get into the character's frame also, of mind. Also three engagement fees, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Three characters, darling. That's three times the money, love. Um, oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, for me, I mean, what I really, really enjoyed was the end of Seven, that ten-page monologue where you're, where Henry is presenting himself as his truest form. Everything that he believes, his whole belief system is out there and he's giving it to Eleven. Um, it was what, was, what I found really enjoyable, obviously, is this belief system that he has is not something just, that just appears and pops up in episode seven. This is something that he has had since he was a child, given his experience with his father and his mother. You know, his father went away to war and effectively murdered, um, murdered civilians. Um, he comes home and he's trying to present himself as this sort of upstanding citizen, you know, and somebody who sort of should reintegrate into society very well and be sort of deemed a hero almost. And that for Henry doesn't sit very well with him at all, obviously, when he was able to see into his father's mind. Um, so that sort of like burning feeling of the world is a lie, people are presenting a false version of themselves is something that is carried through for Henry, you know, from the beginning of time almost with him. So when we meet him at the beginning of five, um, you know, his experience is very much that he's had to survive in this environment with Dr. Brenner. So in order to survive, he's had to blanket this rage, this resentment, this, this inner feeling to be able to, to, be able to stop, um, you know, being hurt almost. Um, and so when Eleven releases him and frees him, he's much more at peace and at ease because that fear is gone. The, the idea that Brenner is controlling him is gone now because he can't control him because he's stronger than Brenner. And then when Elle sends him to the Upside Down, um, all hope is lost, you know, any chance of him kind of having a sort of more normal life um, is removed and so that ultimately all that's left is he's left to stew in this place of isolation again, much as when he was a child, with the resentment, with this just absolute hatred, um, and it compounds his belief system that he's already had. So every experience that he's had in his life, it, it, you know, it's confirmation bias almost. Um, so did I find it confusing? No, I found it really enjoyable to have that inner truth in there all the time and then just put a little bit of a dome over the top of it when I'm speaking to Eleven, when I'm kind of presenting myself to her and there are these moments where I hope that there's this like flash of kind of rage that comes out, even in friendly orderly. It's just in the eyes and it's, it's just very slight. So yeah, yeah, I found that great. I loved it. It's interesting because uh, in the beginning, you don't know that uh, either um, Eddie or the orderly are going to be key characters mm. in the story. And you sort of realize it as uh, <laughs> your act goes on, as uh, things progress. So um, is it fun to uh, elicit, uh, you know, this kind of uh, reaction from the audience to seduce the audience a bit by bit as, you know? I, I, I guess there's something quite satisfying in kind of an, an awareness that you, the character that you play has a a pretty kind of substantial effect on the, the overall uh, 
narrative of the show. Um, and there's something quite gratifying about that kind of happening and kind of not ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, I, I do have, what, what was the question? Seduction, seduction. seduction. the audience. Is it yes. nice to seduce an audience? Um, yeah, it's lovely, what do you think? Darling, it's lovely to yeah. be seduced. I, I, just, <laughs> just one final point on that. I, I think for me, you know, I wasn't necessarily concerned about the audience's reaction, but more so Millie's response to it and the seduction it sounds weird saying seduction, but we're, we're, we're talking intellectually here, so that's okay. Yes. Um, th this, this seduction of kind of drawing her in and allowing her to, forcing her to trust him enough so that he can do what he needs her to do. It, it, it's, it's a joy, it's so manipulative, but it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what actors live for, yeah, isn't exactly. it? <laughs> we're manipulative, but we're so much fun. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such it was a really pleasure. Lovely.